Well hello again and welcome back. Um, I'm sitting on the sea line this morning and I've, cut, I've came down to do some work and it's actually come on to rain really hard. Um, several people have asked me um, about owning uh, a GRP boat. Obviously this is all built in glass fibre. Um, glass reinforced plastic or call it whatever you like. And um, I have only got really experience of, um, say, boats in the value of sort of a few thousand up to twenty thousand pounds. I've never bought a boat over twenty thousand pounds. So anything I say, obviously, is very much my own thoughts on this, my own experiences. I've um, uh, been around boats since I was maybe five or six years old. Um, I've owned many boats with our family um, and then buying boats myself. Uh, and they have all been quite, you know, um, in that lower price bracket. And um, it's quite interesting. I mean, there still are many glass fibre boats out there if, if you want to go down the glass fibre route. Um, uh, obviously, it's a lot cheaper than if you're looking on inland waterways, say uh, I'm on a river here, it's a lot cheaper than maybe a steel boat. Um, they, to me, they, they, they look they look better. Um, obviously, they're not as strong, and um, you know um, <laughs> you have to give them more care. And maybe they do need a little bit more attention. Although steel boats rust, um, any sort of boats will deteriorate um, very quickly. To be honest, um, but having said that, um, you know, like I've just said, there's many boats around. That are 40, 50 plus years old here, built in GRP now, and you can still spend an awful lot of money, you know, on that. So, you know, my thoughts on this, um, you know, a lot of people ask me, or have asked me in the past, when when you're buying a boat, you know, what what's your advice? Well, it, it's simple, really. Um, first of all, you know, make a decision what you're really looking for, um, whether you're looking for a, you know. Um, like I say, uh, a purely a river boat, um, which can be you know wide beam. If you want to go on the canals with your GRP boat, it's got to be six foot ten beam to th uh, fit through the narrow canals. Like this boat, um, not that I would, I would ever dream of taking it on a canal or putting it on a canal. Maybe the Caledonian Canal in Scotland would be fine, but um, this boat wouldn't fit through, say, the Northampton Arm because it's far too wide. I think this boat is about eight foot four width beam, as we should call it, the beam of the boat. So yes, you've first got to prioritise and think where you're going to cruise, where you're going to moor, what you want to do with your boat and look at the size and particularly as I say the beam the width the width of the boat is very important if you want to go on the canals you're going to meet some narrow locks sooner or later and that does restrict you to as I say six foot ten beam to get through those narrow locks um, also a lot of people ask me um, do you think I should have it surveyed well, this is a very, a very, you know, difficult question to ask. I think it comes down to personal choice. Um, the last uh, three boats that I have bought, including um, going back to 2005, I bought a little Freeman narrow beam, Freeman 22, one of the later built um, six foot ten beam Freeman 22s. Uh, which was moored on the River Ouse, uh, just outside Erith, Ouse, uh, just outside Erith, uh, and that boat was priced at around five thousand pounds. Now, a lot of people wouldn't think of having that surveyed, but I certainly did. I had it whole surveyed. I didn't um, worry too much about the engine or the interior, but I certainly had the hull and superstructure. Um, surveyed, which I think in that going back to them was about three hundred pounds. It cost me. Plus, don't forget, um, this is all at your cost. It's a survey, uh, a pre-purchase survey is all at the buy the intended buyer's cost, and also then not only the survey price, you've then got to take into effect 
the crane or slipping whatever that boatyard does most of them operate you know on the bigger boatyards on a crane you have to pay the crane in and the crane back out again you know, or the or what i should say i'm saying that wrong way around you pay to have the boat craned out for the day so the surveyor can come and look at it and then you pay to have it put back in the water which can add you know however much that boatyard charges for that facility on the thames i know it can be quite high it can add up you know you know maybe another couple of hundred pounds or more depending size boat where you are etc um there's a lot of people worried uh, a few years ago um, by osmosis um, in glass fibre. So what is osmosis? Well, osmosis basically is um, when a boat, when a glass fibre boat sits on the water, to put it in very basic terms as I understand it, I'm not an expert on osmosis by any means, um, a certain amount of water over years can sort of, um, permeate through the gel coat and that then uh, causes blisters in the gel coat of the hull and those blisters that water uh, tends to turn um, acidy if you ever burst a gel coat blister it smells very much like vinegar it smells like you know acetic acid acid um, and obviously there has been bad cases, I think, where it has even damaged the um, resin cloth underneath the gel coat. Uh, you can pay huge amounts of money to have your boat taken out, to have all the old gel coat stripped off, to have all the glass cloth then dried out, and then have it re-gel coated. Um, but you look at this, um, on a smaller boat, say um, five, ten thousand, even fifteen thousand pounds, I don't really think it would be viable um, because of the cost. There's not a long guarantee comes with that before they say that uh, osmosis might come back anyway. Um, so I think you have to put osmosis in balance of what it is. An old surveyor that I used to know very well and used to have chats with, he told me, he used to say to me, well boy, he was a real old Northamptonshire surveyor and he used to say, well boy, I've never known a glass fibre boat sink with osmosis. He says they sink because people haven't, you know, turned the seacock off in the winter and it freezes up or the engine water or the, you have a hose split or, um, you know, and you have a window break and the rain pours in and, and nobody comes for several, you know, a couple of months. He said, but I've never known a boat sink through osmosis. Um, so you have to take, you know, um, my Freeman certainly had osmosis, the surveyor found it, he said it wasn't an issue, it was, you know, very minimal. Um, he recommended me to take the boat out in the winter time um, to dry it out. I also did uh, some minor repairs on, on, you'll find on a lot of inland waterways, um, GRP boats, it seems just on the water line, where the sun where if the sun sun shines onto that um, glass fiber just at the water line, that can be a real prominent place that can you know you can get osmosis and certainly my Freeman had got some uh, quite biggish blisters. Uh, but what I did, I had the boat out in it took it out in October. It was chopped up in a boat yard. I then um, ground those blisters out and then put a cover over the boat, sheet it up and try to let the air get to those blisters as much as you know where I, I then I wash them um, I believe going from memory I think I washed them with something like acetone and um, don't take that as said but I'm sure it was I washed it all out thoroughly and then washed it with clear water and then uh, sheeted it off to try and let it dry out as much and then it had a really good epoxy filler um, put over that in those. I mean, they were only talking of sort of holes, probably about that 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 sort of size. You know, sort of about um, perhaps round about like a fifty pence piece size, and um, down the water line, particularly the Freeman had it. And I did that, and it looked fantastic. I, I then anti fouled it, and it went back into the water in March, and I then had it out the subsequent uh, winter, and they were still fine. Um, and that boat was sold and was surveyed 
and the findings were no worse than my boat the survey that I had done in 2005 so yeah um, I wouldn't worry too much on the, on the smaller boat you know about osmosis it's there you monitor it if it's if the boat's got that's the one thing about if you have a survey if the boat is riddled with it you know to the point of great I, I have seen I, I once saw a Freeman 26 that there was great big chunks of um, gel coat had dropped it was that this boat had been taken out and put in a boat yard and great big chunks of the gel coat had actually fell off under the hull well you know that's obviously a different matter and then you you would have to take either scrap the boat or have it you know put right so uh, that is the one advantage of a survey but a, a survey isn't you know 100% red you take it at good faith of what the surveyor is telling you um, Personally, I still think it's worth having done, particularly if you can't get to see the boat out the water. If you can have a good look round the boat, and you could perhaps take somebody you know who's got a little bit more knowledge if you if you're new to boating and have a really good look around the hull uh, and have the boat out the water, fine. But I I have to say my preference I would still opt you know for a survey um, even on a smaller boat. Uh, and that is purely my own view on this, you know, as I say. But you must remember that is probably going to add, you know, three to five hundred pounds at uh, today's prices, I would imagine. And then, you know, you've got the crane in and crane out fees to pay as well on top of that. So um, you have to bear that in mind. You could soon, very soon, you know, say eight or nine hundred pounds, you could lose that if you don't go onwards um, with the boat purchase that's money's lost you know you can't get it back um, the one thing about a survey is whatever whatever findings uh, that the surveyor finds you can use those to probably barter a better deal if there is some work that needs to be done on the boat you can then you know go back to the vendor or the, the seller who if it's a private person and say look this is sunset and this 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 you know I'm going to offer you this now um, and you know because most surveyors will give you a insurance value or if you ask them they will give you an insurance value of what the boat is worth which is a good reference point as well so um, that surveys and my view on them you know um, Perhaps if I was buying a boat, say, today under 5,000, you know, I, I would be confident enough to have a look at it, have it out of the water. And I would certainly always ask the boat to be taken out of the water and have a look, you know, look at the prop, the rudder, any outdrives, any outboard motors, you know, have a really, really good look at the boat out of the water. You know, um, even better if, if the owner, you know, decides to have it pressure washed while it's out because that can reveal a lot more you've got to remember that boat might have been on the water several years and could have a lot of growth underneath it um, which is then hard to as surveyors will tell you is even hard to spot you know things like osmosis or any damage um, and thanks very much for watching and um, we will see you again in a future video and um, bye for now